Now we present Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. The Saar Basin is the backbone of industrial Europe, supplying the potential strength of the defensive skeleton that is the Atlantic Pact. And within this giant of white-hot steel and black coal, there cannot be allowed to form the red, cancerous rust of dissidence, turmoil, and false ideologies. A small black car weaves its way through the pandemonium that is traffic in the gay city of Paris. Then, eventually, it reaches the comparative quiet of the side street known as the Rue Didier. I got the latest figures on coal production in the Saar just before we left the ECA offices, Ken. Not too encouraging. More work stoppages in the mines, Chief. More accidents. That's right. Particularly in the Kobsa mines at Birkenfeld. Uh, Ken, we've got to do something about that. And fast. That's what we're here for, Chief. When I think of how badly that coal is needed to build up Europe's... Uh, why, it's more valuable than diamonds. So are the people of the Saar. Huh? Those mines shutting down mean no work for them. No money, no food. Chief, people like that will turn anywhere for help. Even to cockeyed promises from the East. Mm. That's our real job, to keep those people on our side working and happy. Well, if the mayor of Birkenfeld brought the information he promised to Paris, we'll have a lot more to go on. Maybe he even knows who's responsible for those accidents at the Cosa mines. I will soon find out. Here's the pension you're staying at. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Uh... Zell Schmidt. That's right, Mr. Chief. Plenty happy to see me, eh, Mr. Thurston? Would you like to take over, Chief? With pleasure, Ken. Zell Schmidt, for the past three days, you've hounded us all over Paris. Now you're through, permanently. Not another word, Mr. Chief. <laughs> this time, I'm holding the palm in my hand. What? <laughs> well, I don't care one way about the Cubs of mines in the Birkenfeld place. But if you're interested in some red-hot Johnny-on-the-line information about them... <laughs> what do you know about those mines, Pagan? Please, Mr. X, would you want me to tell tattles on a friend uh, without get, getting paid for it? Ken. They came from inside the pension. Let's go. Which way, Ken? That door's open. Let's try it. That is far enough, gentlemen. Ken. Step over to the other side of the room, please. Quickly. Well. Yes. Come on, Chief. Oh, Ken, they're in the corner. Yeah. Mind if we take a look at him, Miss, um... We can forget the amenities. As for the mayor of Birkenfeld, there is nothing anyone can do for him now. I can see that. I would suggest you wait at least ten minutes before attempting to follow me. It might prove very dangerous if you try to move before then. Off we just then. Come on, Ken. After her. Why bother? Why bother? For Pete's sake, she just killed a man. Chief, I'm going to pay a visit to the Saar Basin. I'll discuss it with her there. But what good will... Wait a minute. You mean you know her? I've seen her picture in the paper. Well, who the devil is she? She's usually identified as the very rich and very wild Aline Kobza. Kobza? Owner of the Kobza mines at Birkenfeld. Your pardon, please. Yeah, Herr Thurston. That's right. Who are you? My name is Hoffman, captain of the Birkenfeld Civil Police. What can I do for you, Captain? Return to Paris on the next plane, Herr Thurston. Oh? Why? We have no need for outside assistance here. My men and I are quite capable of handling any difficulties that might occur in the mines. You haven't been too successful so far, Hauptmann. The disturbances will cease when Karl Brewer is imprisoned. Who is Karl Brewer? Foreman of the Kupser Mines. Oh, do you make it a habit to imprison foremen because of accidents? Accidents, no. Sabotage? Yeah. You're sure that's what it is? Aren't you here, Thurston? I'll let you know after I've been here a while. But I have already informed you that there is no need for your presence here. I'm more interested in what you haven't informed me, Hauptmann. And what is that? How you happen to meet me here at the airport. How you know why I'm here. I'll see you around, Hauptmann. Are you, Mr. Thurston? This way, right here. What? <laughs> Hop into my limousine and I'll give you all the dope and the cobs of mines. For a slight consideration, of course. Mm-hmm. 
So Aline Kobza sent this car for me. Sure. I got to know that cute little kuchen in Paris. I knew right away after I read about her in the papers that, uh, that we had mutual interest. She was rich and you were broke. That's right, she was... Mr. Thurston. So you wangled a job as her chauffeur. Chauffeur? Oh, that explains a lot of things. What you were doing at the pension, your cracks about the Cobes the mines, and you probably told Captain Hauptmann I was coming here. Well, after that accident with the mayor, I knew you'd be following us down here. Naturally, I wanted to meet you. So I asked that Hauptmann joker to check you for me. Oh, he was plenty happy, too. Yeah, I can see that. Well, anyways, now that we're working together, I guess there'll be no more trouble in the little cookie's minds. Hey, Mr. Thurston? Guess again, Pagan. Huh? A mind whistle blowing at three in the afternoon doesn't mean lunchtime. Step on it. All right, Carl. What excuses do you have to offer this time? Rotten timbers used for sure. I do not need any excuses, Miss Corpsa. I warned you, it was only a question of time before they would collapse. As foreman of my mind, it is your responsibility to see no accidents occur. And as owner, it is your responsibility to see that my men work under safe conditions. Three more of them lie dead in the east shaft. Five more are badly injured. That is most unfortunate. How soon can we start mining the east shaft again? Perhaps in 36 hours. See to it, we are operating within 12. 12? It cannot be done. 12 hours, Carl. And... I would not advise any deliberate delay on your part. For it seems we are about to be honored by the presence of an expert in seeing through such tactics. Is that not right, Mr. Thurston? Is it, Miss Cobza? Who is this man? He is Ken Thurston, the expert I just mentioned. Mr. Thurston, this is my foreman, Carl Brewer. How are you, Brewer? So you are an authority on mines, Mr. Thurston. That may prove quite unfortunate for you here. What's that supposed to mean? Mining experts are not needed here, Mr. Thurston. Only safety devices. And if you do not think so, remember that accidents are not particular as to their victims. They can happen to experts, too. This way, please, Mr. Thurston. My office is this way. We can discuss your visit with more privacy there. What is there to discuss, Miss Coulter? Perhaps we may clarify certain misunderstandings you have regarding me. If you still believe I murdered Birkenfeld's mayor in Paris. You know, Mr. Thurston, I found your friend Zellschmidt a most amusing person. Ah, the conversation was getting interesting. Why change the subject? The mayor called me in Paris. I came to his pension to learn what he knew about the accidents. Before we had a chance to talk, someone outside the rear window shot him. That is all there was to it. You wouldn't think so if you'd been on the other end of that gun. I had no intention of becoming involved. I had enough unfavorable publicity in the Parisian papers. That could be a reasonable explanation. Why not give it to the surete in Paris? Perhaps I will, Mr. Thurston. Now, is there any other cooperation I can extend to you? You can tell me what you know about Hoffman. Emil, our police captain? Yeah. He is above suspicion. Can you say the same for your foreman, Carl Brewer? Just a minute. Charles, will you bring in the report on Carl Brewer, please? Certainly, Miss Corsa. There's a gentleman here who wishes to see it. Yes, Charles. This is Mr. Thurston. Mr. Thurston. Charles Groen, my office manager. Glad to know you, Groen. It is a pleasure, sir. Here is the information Miss Corpso requested. Uh, Brewer's entire personnel record, as well as all the background we've been able to obtain on him. Thanks. Yeah, it'll take a little time to... Uh-huh. I see Brewer was with the French resistance movement during the war. He was. Why is he penciled in question mark after the statement? I can explain that, Mr. Thurston. I was in the same unit of the Marquis as was Brewer. He was suspected at the time of being a Gestapo agent who had slipped into our ranks. Oh. Uh-huh. Any proof? No, neither of his guilt nor innocence. It is quite unfortunate, too, particularly since a series of uh, accidents here at the mine. Yeah. It's about time we gave somebody a chance to prove something about those. You forget we have been trying to do that ever since the accident started. I'm afraid it will not be too easy to accomplish, even for such an expert as you, Mr. Thurston. Oh, it shouldn't be too tough, Miss Kudza. If sabotage is involved, somebody will start giving himself away. 
What makes you think that? I'm going to start spending some time down in the mine. I don't get it, Mr. Thurston. Why do you want to go wandering down here in the bottom of the earth for anyway? I'm setting myself up as a sitting duck, Pagan. Huh? What kind of talk is that? Ducks would have better sense than to go sitting around in the coal mine tunnels. Hey, what are those uh, things running along here that, that look like railroad tracks? Railroad tracks? Oh, are you joking, Mr. Thurston? There's hardly room in this narrow place for me to get through. The loading cars can just about make it. Loading cars? They carry the workers to the mine headings and, and bring out the coal. Boy, private railroad cars to go to work in? Hmm. Pretty soft for those miner jokers. The three who died in that accident didn't think so. Hey, this is the end of the tunnel. Yeah, let's start back. But there's nothing down here. No, no accidents, no nothing. This tunnel's in the west shaft, Pagan. The accident happened in the east shaft. They haven't mined this tunnel for over four months. But by comparing the two, I can... Pagan, you hmm? hear that? Sure, it sounds like a, like a railroad train. Must be some of those loading cars running in this tunnel. Yeah. Don't the driver know there's no room in this narrow place for both of us and the train? Don't he? Mr. Rex! Start running, Peg, on fast. But, but there's no place to run to. Up ahead there, run! Yes. Yeah, that train mashed itself flatter than the flapjack at the end of the tunnel. Hey, hey, what happened to the poor driver? There wasn't any driver. Huh? Then how come it was running loose in a tunnel where nobody works? If I didn't know better, I'd, I think somebody was trying to run us down. <coughs> Mr. X. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Now, act two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. It sounds to me, Ken, like those runaway cars were a deliberate attempted murder. I'll worry about that, Chief. What did you find out? Helene Copes is broke. She's had a petition for ECA funds to keep her mind going. So the newspapers weren't kidding about her being a wild spender. Any word from the ECA? Oh, they'll give her the funds all right. Those mines have to be kept going. But with a proviso. A government administrator appointed to handle all the... the... Ken, you still there? That was someone else hanging up, Chief, not me. An extension phone? Could be. I'm going to check on it. When you get the dope I asked for, hang on to it. I'll have Pagon get in touch with you from town. Okay, Ken. Will do. Were you looking for something, Mr. Thurston? Yes, your extension phone. It wouldn't happen to be in the library there with you, would it? As a matter of fact, it is. Did you enjoy your little eavesdrop? It was not too enlightening. After all, it is no news to me that I need money badly. Some people could make a pretty strong motive out of that. Oh? Yeah. A woman who likes to spend money like you do might not be too particular where it comes from. You're saying, Mr. Thurston, that such a woman might even take pay to destroy her own minds... That's right, Aline. What do you think? Why not? If the mines no longer provide her an income. I trust, Fräulein Kupsa, that this meeting will not take too long. I have my duties to perform. So also have Mr. Groen, Mr. Brewer, and myself, Captain. But since Mr. Thurston seems to know what the Marshall Plan will require I'll of make us... it short. This meeting's a council of war. 
The idea is to keep the Cobes of Mines operating at full production levels. You realize, of course, Thurston, that that is just what we've been attempting to do in the past. Let's see if we can be successful this time, Brewer. What are your suggestions, Mr. Thurston? Brewer, I want you to step out of your job as office manager and take over supplies. Oh? Check every piece of material that goes into the mines for possible tampering or sabotage. That means everything. Timbers, rails, drills, blasting powder. Handling the supplies has always been my job, Thurston. Brewer, you're going to be too busy stepping up protection to handle anything but your men. So far, Herr Thurston, I fail to see why I have been included in this meeting. Your job is to supply police guards at the mines, Hoppen. Enough of them, so there won't be any more accidents. And, uh, what of me, Mr. Thurston? Surely you have some job for me to perform also. You like finances, Aline. Suppose you handle that end of things. It will be a pleasure. All right, Thurston. I will see that my men produce the work. But one more accident, and I will refuse to order them down again. My men will work for a decent life, Thurston, for their homes, their families, their country. But nothing could make them work for an owner who will deliberately sacrifice their lives for money. Out here, Mr. Thurston. Quiet, you idiot. Oh, oh. oh, there you are, Mr. X. I thought I saw you wandering around in the dark. What are you doing over here near the powder house? Any. Hey! Mr. X! Yeah. I just found him. Oh. Why do you always have to go around finding dead bodies? Who, who is he? The night watchman. But. But who. Well, I... What's going on? That little talk of mine earlier. Looks like it's starting to break things open. Have you still got the keys to Aline Cobes' car? Who needs keys? Okay. Get into Birkenfeld. Call the chief. Tell him I need every bit of dope he's got right now. Sure, Mr. X. But where will I find you? I'm going to check the powder house first, then the mine. Now beat it. You bet, Mr. X. I'm off like a couple of bunnies. There is no doubt about it, Mr. Thurston. A number of the powder boxes are gone. And the detonator caps and fuses as well. That's what I figured. And I was out cold for about 15 minutes before you found me. That's enough time to... Does Brewer have any men down in the mine? A full shift went to work. But surely you don't think... I'm going down there, Eileen. You get hold of Houghton and his men. Tell them they better locate that powder and fast. Houghton, but I saw him in the mine elevator. Starting to go down the shaft. What's your hurry, brother? Uh, Thurston. Thurston, there's a powder charge laid down here somewhere. We have to find it. How do you know about that? Because I was in the powder house. I know what is missing there. You wouldn't happen to know who knocked me out, would you? Of course I know. I did. Well, that's frank enough. In the dark, I couldn't tell who you were. I thought you might... What difference does that make now? We have to find the powder. And I've looked everywhere I could think of. You didn't happen to check the loading cars, did you? The loading cars, no. But what... Thurston, there are some cars coming this way now. That's right. Good Lord. The powder is aboard one of those cars and the train is a runaway. Yeah. One guesses the what will happen when it hits the end of the track. Oh, come on, please. Get up here before it is too late, please. Hello, Miss Cobbs. Oh, What's uh, cooking with everybody? Thank you, Schmidt. What are you doing here? Looking for Mr. Thurston. He wasn't in a powder house, so I figured I'd take this elevator thing down into look, the mine. Look, look, Zellschmidt. Have you seen Captain Hauptmann's men around? Sure. Hauptmann gave them the night off in Birkenfeld. 
Birkenfeld. Yeah, they're drinking beer and playing pinnacle. Oh, I should have known. Well, I'll tell you the next time. With your money and my cards, we'll practically own the whole thing. Zellschmidt, you had better pray that Ken Thurston is coming up on this elevator. Huh? You mean something going on down there? Hey, you see who's on board? That's the joker you were looking Captain for. Captain Hauptmann, did you stop it? Stop it, Farlein. To what do you refer? The sabotage of the mine, you fool. Did you stop it? My dear Fräulein, I can assure you that there will be no sabotage of your mines tonight or at any other time. You have my word for it. You, Fräulein Kops, uh, I did make a most thorough check. There was not the slightest trace of blasting powder. It is not possible. All right, I... Hartmann. All right. It is all over. The mine is gone. Who cares about the mine? Mr. Thurston was down there. He's the one who's gone. Oh, what am I going to do now? I have sent some crews down to check the damage, but I'm afraid it will be several hours before we hear anything. Mm. Why wait that long, girl? Ken! Yes, sir. I'll sir. give a report Mr. now. It's you. It's really you. But I do not understand, Herr Thurston. The explosion, it must have blown the tunnel into bits. It did. In the west shaft. The west shaft? But the, that's the one where there's no coal, no nothing. Not quite, Pagan. There are still tracks for the loading cars and switches to route them in there. Ah, so. The powder was aboard loading cars. And you switched them into the west tunnel. Yep. But Brewer says he'll have the mine in operation again by daybreak. Hey, then we're in business, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of coal coming out of the Cobza mine. Plenty of it, Pagan. As for future accidents, well, we'll put an end to them. Captain Hauptmann. Yeah, yeah, Thurston. You may as well arrest Charles Bowen now. Charles! You are joking, of course. How about it, Pagan? You got the report from the chief? Huh? Oh, that one, yeah, sure. It said something about this grown character being a Gestapo man or something in the French resistance. No, you are mistaken, Selschmidt. That is Karl Brewer you speak it of. It won't do, Gowen. The files in Paris don't make mistakes. Even granting that you are right, there is no proof against me. No? Someone tried to run me down with those loading cars. I'd have hunch the same trick might be tried again. So I laid a trap. A trap, Thurston? I smeared a light mixture of graphite and grease on the throttle of every sh shuttle engine in the mine. When you set that powder train going, you got that mixture on the palms of your hands. Not so fast with that gun, Grant. Oh, <laughs> boy, you really powdered him, Mr. X. He's out like it. Hey, look at his hands. There's nothing on them. I know. But can... A mixture of graphite and grease. His palms should have been black. Yeah. But he didn't have any on his hands. Mr. Thurston, you mean all that stuff you told him was was just a gag? That's right, Pagan. He didn't have to have any black on his hands. His conscience was black enough. Here's a word from RCA Victor. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And before I say anything else, I think you ought to know that those in tonight's cast were Joan Banks, Will Wright, Hi Aberbach, Harry Bartell, and Ben Wright. Next week's and complicating matters, as usual, will be Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. And until next week, same time and same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. On NBC.